Hello students, welcome back to another video about waves. Today I'm going to focus on introducing some new vocabulary that we use to talk about waves and how they move. In the last video I talked about different characteristics of a wave and the different parts of a wave. So pretty much like the wave anatomy. Today I'm going to continue expanding that wave vocabulary and list some terminology that we use. The first term I want to define is oscillatory motion. I'm going to write that up. Waves move in a way that we can describe as oscillatory motion. What oscillatory means is that something is moving in a repeated motion. A good example of oscillatory motion is like a pendulum. Right? A pendulum swings back and forth, and if there's minimal air resistance, it will keep on swinging in that way repeatedly. And it's, we can say that that pendulum is oscillating. Similar to pendulums, waves oscillate. If we follow the path of this wave, we can see that it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, in repeated motion. So we say that waves undergo oscillatory motion. A word that describes the direction in which the wave is traveling is called propagation. Okay, so wave propagation is the direction in which the wave is moving. The same direction as the velocity of the wave. Okay, if I draw this wave here, and I know that the wave is traveling from left to right, then I know that the propagation of the wave is towards the right, and I can see that the oscillations are occurring up and down. A wave that looks like this this is like a good example of like a water wave in the ocean or the kind of wave you can make with a piece of rope that you swing up and down. This kind of wave is called a transverse wave. Okay, so transverse waves can be defined as waves that have propagations and oscillations that are perpendicular. So they're like 90 degrees from each other. The propagation is left and right and the oscillations are up and down. Okay, so here's my definition for a transverse wave. The propagation is perpendicular with the oscillations. So whenever you think of like an ocean wave, it comes in towards the shore, so that's the direction of the propagation, but the oscillations of the waves are going up into the sky and then down into the water. There is another type of wave that doesn't move like a transverse wave, where the oscillations are parallel with the propagations, which means they both move in the same direction, and that's called the longitudinal wave. I'll go ahead and draw a picture to help you understand how that looks. Okay, so here I've drawn a longitudinal wave. An example of a longitudinal wave would be like sound waves, or like the kind of wave that you can make in a slinky. If you have a, a slinky pulled tight, and if you quickly compress and expand the slinky, you'll see a wave move through that slinky in this kind of fashion. This is the same way that sound waves work. Whenever sound travels through the air, it vibrates the air molecules and projects waves through the air that kind of look like this, if you could see the molecules. And just to be more specific in what's going on here with this wave, you have areas of compression, and areas of expansion. These compressions are more dense in the medium that the wave is moving through. So like for sound waves, this would be densely packed air molecules. And these uh, spread out parts would be less dense of air molecules. And that makes sense of the slinky too, right? Whenever you make the pulse go through the slinky, the compressions are more of that slinky bound up together, whereas the expanded parts, there's less slinky there. So to define the longitudinal wave, it would just be the opposite of the transverse. The propagation would be parallel with the oscillations. I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this board to have some room for some other terminology. Here you can see a comparison of a transverse wave versus a longitudinal wave and how those look differently. Another term we use in discussion of waves is medium. The medium for a wave is what the wave is traveling inside of. Different kinds of waves require different mediums. For example, a water wave obviously requires water. Sound waves require air and light waves actually don't require any medium at all. So light waves can travel through empty space pretty much. They can travel through air as well, they can travel through liquids, but some substances of course don't allow light to travel through it like many solids. Okay, so once again, a medium is just what the wave is traveling through. A word that we use to describe a short motion of a wave is called a pulse. If I were to draw a picture of a pulse, it could look something like this. Here I have the equilibrium line, and in that line there's a single wave that's moving through it. You can recreate this kind of situation if you have a rope that's pulled tight, and then you yank up and down really quick, and then you'll see this kind of pulse move through the rope. The last term I want to define is called periodic, and that describes waves that move in a certain pattern with time. Okay, so a more formal definition. It's a wave with a continuous pattern of changing frequency and wavelength. Okay, I've attempted to draw a periodic wave here, where you can see there's a repeated pattern, a big wave followed by a small wave, and then it repeats itself, a big wave followed by a small wave. So here you can see that the wavelength right here is a lot bigger than the wavelength right here. But then the wave goes back to doing what it did before, and then it just fluctuates between this pattern of shrinking and growing wavelengths and frequencies. Okay, so that's all the terminology I wanted to talk about today. Today we talked about oscillations, we have talked about propagation, and how those two things are different, and how the relationship between those two things tells us whether or not a wave is longitudinal or transverse. 
We've also talked about what a medium is, what a pulse is, and what a periodic wave is. Okay, hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about waves, and we'll continue to dig into waves this week, and I hope to catch you next time. Thank you.